I think it's a good idea. By the way, I actually think a flaw is one of the things you guys think is a feature, which is the feature, even though, like I said at the beginning, they didn't do it fully the way you think. They just like did it like there's one team plays with the other. Obviously, the, the premise is they're somewhat merging it, right? Like in the north, there's one team from another one, and there's an LLA team, basically people don't know, and then the south there's ones, and then obviously you meet in the playoffs. I actually think that if you think about trying to conserve anything that you ever built with the LCS, it would have been way smarter to completely keep them separate and just have north is like an LCS thing and South is the other one and then maybe just for world's qualification because I can tell you right now here's a prediction for you here's what will happen because Americans are incapable of seeing the world through anything else except raw fucking US dollars GDP that's why they're so mentally ill they actually tell people the reason why they are an ideological good in the world is that the raw GDP of like poor people in the world has been raised which has no necessarily bearing on what their life is like and if it's awesome it just went from one dollar to one fifty in the well, there you go. Congratulations. Again, just like Riot, we made the problem, but then we solved it for you by giving you 50 cents more. So in the same way, right, I think American fans think I'm just trolling when for the last three years I've said they should literally have made LCS a minor region years ago. Like it did not, if you ever look internationally, it, like they, the only teams that ever did anything were ones that were just rammed with millions and millions of dollars and like usually the best import players too, including literal world champion Koreans. So to me, LCS has always been Fugazi anyway. Here's what I think will happen when you have these cross-regional, except now it's just cross-conference matches in the playoffs. You will have teams from the dreaded South will beat the uh, former LCS teams. And everyone won't, Monty, go. Brilliant. We've got this strong, vibrant league where the Southern teams are now risen. No, no. Everyone will remember in their brains, they've been told by Riot the whole time, they're a minor region and you're a major region. And everyone will go, oh, wait, it's even worse. Now the LCS is as bad as CB LOL. And, LL and it'll be, I actually think the perception will be even worse of the league. That's my prediction. As soon as those mm. first, as soon as Payne beats fucking Team Liquid and fucking Flux or Oh, what, you don't even know in the league, by the way. As soon as they get a win off like a fucking Cloud9 and a B, or what, it's going to be the end of the world. Like that will be the, that will yeah. actually make people think this league is shit. And it will just make people think the whole thing is a minor region now. And then as Zabatine says, they'll have taken slots away. But at that point, who'll give a fuck? Because these are just the teams going to come last place at Worlds. You know, there's kind of a, there's kind of a, re a, a reversal of uh, what ended up um, killing off, um, you know, competitive StarCraft. I mean, you know, for those of us that watch starcraft 2 uh every week and again i don't know if you were a fan of starcraft Zab, if you watched a lot of that back in the day uh but at the uh, very beginning and then and then i kind of stopped i would say like my interest for the game really dropped around 2013 yeah right which which is you know i mean to be fair i think that might be true for a lot That's of people the golden age, basically, but, yeah yeah, well, yeah but like you know 20 20 2013 you had you would have 2012 2013 you would have had like a fucking starcraft 2 event every weekend right and one of the reasons activision blizzard ended up changing their format and finally getting involved in uh, instead of just giving out like ranking points to tournaments was because south koreans were just battering everyone and they were like we're losing north american viewership and by extension north american dollars because americans don't like watching south koreans beat americans the, the, you, what you, you had to be like foreign you had to be like an esports elitist to want to chew hey, in hey i'm just the actual them. american here yeah, and yes sorry, i was sorry. an esports elitist watching listen Korean america we're talking on... about you not to you <laughs> let, <laughs> let, let, but let i'm just saying i was that i was that american guy who wanted to watch you. the south koreans just crush everybody and by the yeah. way i did actually commentate starcraft 2 i i i casted the last osl uh for starcraft yeah. 2 and i and i so, casted the first wcs uh like international tournament as well so so you you will remember as well right like th that this this was a very real thing that happened like american viewership was down down english speaking viewership was down 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 all I mean, people used to say things on the forums like oh you know he's a really good player but south koreans are just so boring we had all the memes at dreamhack with the bad champagne bottle openings and the really bad translated interviews and and, and so which is too bad because actually in starcraft they got some they had some pretty pretty big personalities from the korean side like mc yeah, and like especially compared to yeah you but know. the joke there monty is because they were who, who have worn their fucking wrist to a little knob like a hair like in a doll <laughs> then you go open up this champagne they're like yeah exactly so so you had all of that at the mission blizzard what they wanted to do was they were like look we've got to do we've got to do it by region 
The only way we can save it again with the WCS is to have the South Koreans play the South Koreans and the Americans play the Americans and the Europeans play the Europeans and then we're all going to bring them together. I remember, in fact, me, me and Duncan did a podcast. It might even have been the infamous <laughs> podcast. I'm just thinking about this now. It. If you don't yeah. know, it's a quick sidebar. Me and Richard once did an episode of Unfiltered, yeah. right? But because at the time I had this beef with... De- I don't know why I say at the time. I had a beef with Destiny, right? I obviously wouldn't appear on a show with him. So Chan Man was like, it's all right, I'll make a new show, then there'll be no problem. He made a show, by the way, but it was on the surface a good idea. He goes, I'll make a show called Unfiltered Esports. Obviously, he's not that much into that shit now anyway, and we'll just do a topic about WCS. And even yeah. though at the time, me and Richard were held in quite good regard in like StarCraft, like they were like... Yeah. like I hosted it, it all the events, and, you know? Yeah, like it, we did one podcast, money where all we did is like, not even in, in this kind of vitriol, but just, cr- just criticise the format. And no joke, all of StarCraft 2, including like half the pros, were just like, fuck! Those guys, and I'm like joking. <laughs> like we essentially just exited StarCraft Two. Yeah, now, it, it like, literally. Anymore, I, I was literally, if you believe this, StarCraft Two was the esports community that loved me. You were probably the most more, popular. Yes, more, more than CS. I hosted the events. I did all the walk around yep. interviews. I did long form twenty minute interviews with players and personalities. I was invited to take TV every time they were doing a take TV event. Every they all of me, and of course, I was the guy who called out all the Kickstarter bullshit, all the Kickstarter promises. I wrote that famous article the land of broken promises where i advocated for all the starcraft people as consumers me and total biscuit were like the fucking boys in starcraft you know what i mean and then i went on i said listen activision blizzard have come and fix this wcs a bit too late kill him kill him boo it's like this can't be real (laughs) but it was that, that literally happened anyway the point i'm making is what Activision Blizzard found is that it was too late, that they needed to do it sooner. What Riot are going to learn is, because they're doing the inverse, Duncan's absolutely spot on. When the Brazilians are in the ascendancy and all the Brazilian teams are winning, and by, by the way, get ready for that. That's coming, right? If I know anything about North American League, right, that's coming, right? And so, yeah, the fans are going to go, but I, I, I'm not a fan of the Brazilian teams. The fa- you had the fan base of the Brazilian teams, by the way, many of whom are going to boycott this league because they're so ass pained about them closing down CB Lol, all of that stuff, right? So you, you, you're already you've already angered the fan base. You are hoping is going to prop up your numbers, but you're going to lose fans because nobody wants to see Team Liquid get spanked week in week out, right? And so the Liquid fans, Cloud Nine fans, they'll bail. And like I say, if it doesn't start that way. It will very quickly get that way. I will, I will tell you one thing just about, the, you know, the difference in work ethic from North American esports to South American esports. It's day and night. And uh, I think a lot of American teams are going to be in for a rude awakening and Duncan spot on. That will kill the league. That will kill it. That will be I'm the final. I'm not sure there's going to be enough cross play between, between Brazil and North America for the Brazilian but teams to it, make massive the- games. Games, yeah, but though. one, one, presumably since they're in all the conferences, won't they scream each other if potentially? I don't think they mm. can based on team. The pain? Okay. Do they not play in the playoffs in each of these things? Though, when I'm looking at not this, in split in two. They point? only play in the fearless one and then they play oh, at the it? end right. for world's okay. qualification. Right. So they only play okay. each other twice uh, and not mm. before MSI. So I don't know. I think it's going to take some time. I mean, you could argue okay. that makes my point even worse then, as in a better one for me, as in if they at least played in the league at the same time, Monty, and you actually see that for real pain gaming is as good as liquid, then you could maybe accept it. If you keep them separate and at the end, right before world's pain comes in a beast, yeah. that's the end of the world, isn't it? Is it like, yeah. what the fuck? I that's thought they were the that... shit. They were the bad yeah, conference, weren't they? You know? That, that, that's what I'm saying. If, if the purpose of this league is to try and balance two regions and produce a, pro, a proportional representation of those re- regions before worlds, and none of the North Americans get through, the, the, I mean, the yeah, one to. of them the has to get them. through, Richard. One, one, one has, has to. to. So they but, they do have a guaranteed slot, essentially. Yes. Yeah. The the winner of the summer, like the the, the, the winner of the summer. Uh, right. Yeah, I see that. So, down so, so, so that basically, the way the way one. it works is yes. there are three slots. The highest performing North North Conference and the highest performing South Conference team both go. And one basically one of them is also guaranteed top three because they have to basically they place into top three by winning one right. best of five because the first stage of the playoffs is number one from north, number one from south playing each other. And that 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 sends you immediately into the top three of the tournament. That's like a flaw, I think, in the in the the the, the bracket design. Um, but and then the the third slot goes to 
the best say it's performing. not a flaw, Monty. This... They cynically just wanted an LCS team yeah. to go to Worlds. Even though it could be the LLA team, it's just unlikely to be. But I think they cynically sure, it could did be that to guarantee people like Co9 do go, well, I am out of in this league. You know what I mean? Right. I think that was cynically but, done, surely. But LCS previously had three slots, and now they have uh, yes. they have a maximum of two and a minimum of one. Right. But well, I, yeah, maybe maybe that's, actually, I mean, that's actually that's not even true. That's not even true. They actually have a maximum or a minimum of zero because the LLA team could actually just yeah. take the slot and it could be two Southern Conference teams, so, which would yeah, be I the mean, funniest thing ever. So, which, 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 yeah, I mean, you know, fingers crossed for that outcome. But yeah, I mean, that, that that's fair enough. I'm sorry. I was looking at the um, third split describer, yeah. which is anyway, I guess, where they do play. Each yeah, that's OK. Game. We can clear that up. All right. Zabatine. Yeah. I, sorry, sorry. I, just, I, I'm just trying to picture like summer split happens and uh, like right now we're kind of in a pretty sweet spot for the LCS because there is both FlyQuest and Team Liquid that are relatively competitive worldwide. But that's something that's like not promised to last, especially because I mean the success of FlyQuest is still based on like three imports and the success of Team Liquid is like four foreign players or something like this. Um, so let's like i can assume that within the, the the kind of near future like let's say one to three years there are going to be a, a world where uh, either this player retire and the renewal of these players is going to be much harder to do because the financial the relative financial power of na in terms of esports and player attraction has been heavily diluted uh, and i think for instance the promise of having a strong fan base is probably going to be way more potent in brazil i've seen many pretty good european players already like heading to brazil because they know like they can make a career out of like being in brazil um so I, I prospect that in the next three years, you might have a scenario where like, let's assume the, the only good team in NA is like, is like C9 and they make it right. And then you have a tie qualification for, uh, between an, a Southern American team and, and I would say like Team Liquid, which is second and Team Liquid gets, gets beaten. Uh, you send as a, as a byproduct of your whole year, two worlds, C9 and let's say Red Canids and Fluxo. And C9 goes into Swiss, drafts, you know, because it's not going to be a major region anymore. Like, I don't know how Swiss is going to work with that format, but they get booted pretty fast. Like, they go 0 of 3. What's the attractiveness? Like, after a year like that, right? Uh, like, factually, this happens. What is the the perception, right? Because I think the success of a league is much, it's very correlated to the perception of the public. What is the perception of the public towards this LTA? We send Cloud9 that got 0 of 3. As a North American resident, right? You, you live in LA or I don't know, Michigan, wherever you want. And it's Red Canids and Fluxo that had the close match against Mad Lions. And C9 went out because they play HLE and, and I don't know, T1. And you hear and it's like, oh, guys, let's, ex let's be excited for next year. Like, who's going to be realistically excited knowing that you're making this format with choosing teams where... TSM and CRG are not there anymore, so locally it doesn't apply as much as it used to. And, and the byproduct of that is something that's probably going to be very lukewarm for North American residents. I think Thorin makes a pretty good point for like the attractiveness, the, glo the global attractiveness of the LTA being pretty worse in the context of international tournaments. If there wasn't any international tournament, I think it would be a great league. Yeah, By the way, right. you notice as well, I tried to That's be fair. very fair and make it that it's not that the Southern American team has to, like, uh, currently they are worse, but they don't have to be. But the point is, even if they actually legitimately are better, I just don't believe the real LCS fans will ever, like, buy into it. I think in their mind, they always have to believe that. So, like, it's sort of like, well, at least we're up here and they're down here. I think they can't handle the idea that it could, they could have been parity all along for all we know. We, all right. we didn't have a league that... I'm going to, I'm going to take a different approach here and just say, what if, you know, sure, they're trying to have the representation of both North and South conference at internationals, but let's just, we, we know that neither North America nor South America is ever going to do shit in league of legends, oh, at least course, not yeah. while league of legends is relevant. So let's just yeah. say, okay, they get these slots and they're going to get, they're going to get owned like they always do. And it's whatever. Okay. So international is not important. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to build a very strong domestic league between that has this, these peaks of competition. So we can foster this North South rivalry, oh. right? And we're trying to build our own thing. That's more about the trash talking. Hence why we have this system where teams pick each other. My question to you is this, if that is the point, why don't we do that for the playoffs? Why is the why is all the picking done? Like if literally you are trying to build the shit talking and rivalries, why does it go away in the most important point in the split three playoffs? 
Like, if we're already agreeing that this is a for fun region and we're going to do formats which are for fun that are objectively, with the inclusion of best of ones, with the inclusion of the picking, and like I said, we did this intentionally at Flashpoint. We said, this is not the most competitive Counter-Strike format that exists. But we're making that decision because we're trying to do something different. If you're trying to do that, then why in the points where you're actually potentially going to get the most trash talk between the Northern and the Southern Conference to set up rivalries, do we move away from that? Why didn't we create a format when they play each other that has these elements? That's what's confusing to me. It's like it's not even internally consistent as a product. Yeah, because you qualify to Worlds, and Worlds has to be the most competitive integer. Uh, but they're already going to lose. Of... That's the whole point. It's never going to be competitive, so you might as well make yeah, it fun. Yeah, but anything that's tied, right? Like I think that one, the, the core pillar in, in the Riot's mind, right? I'm not saying like whether they're right or not, but I think in their mind, Worlds is competitive, and we know with Swiss formats and all the draws that it it isn't really. It, but anything that qualifies to Worlds has to be perfectly. You know, like competitive, like competitive integrity has to be at the highest during that time, and that's why they make the fourth and format in winter because nobody cares. They fill the middle of the year with like whatever, and then MSI, nobody cares, and then they move to summer, and then they make this all banter WWE format, and then when it actually matters, where the stakes should be high, then they they chicken and like, oh no, because imagine they pick the I don't know whatever team they have inside information on like the southern american league or there is collusion between or whatever we can't deal with like a i would say a bad buzz on, on these things so we're just gonna make as rigid right it's like the playoff has just been de de designed to be as rigid as possible in a way to avoid any of this discussion because if one day you have one guy on reddit that come and say oh i know my cousin works for loud and Loud had a call with Team Liquid three months prior and they play each other, whatever it's true or not, then this, for the competition, the qualification to Worlds, which is the highest product of the whole esport industry, is a disaster for Riot. And since they're very risk averse, they were like, okay, we're going to have it until... That's the line that Richard was saying. It's like, there is this line where it gets exciting and they see it, right? And they're like, nah, I mean, there I, might I be just, something wrong happening. I just want to see them follow through with the idea completely, where it's like you you, you call your shot in the playoffs as well, and then you get them shit-talking, you know, each other, you know, between yeah. Brazil and North America. That that would be great. Then I mean, go even further. Then when you take the Baron, their chairs get all rumbly, like, oh, shit, for a little while. Like, let's just put all crazy idea. Then yeah. fans, when they reach a certain corral hall level, all of a sudden one player's chair literally gets hot. Oh, that could be straight up. By the way, these are, I'm, the these are throwaways, meter. but these are, all, these are already straight fire ideas. We're better than anything in this document. I think, I think you should be, I think they should be able, once they hit certain sub goals, uh, basically, yes, you know exactly. how, you know how Twitch is doing those like emote confettis, you know, on the screen these days? It should just be vampettas that just like yes. pop up. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's still the part, Richard, I can't handle is that the rest of these idiots just think they're just looking at the viewership going, oh, delicious viewership. They're not yeah. understanding every single, like Sniper, who plays for uh, Fly, uh, Team Liquid, right? 100 Thieves, sorry. FlyQuest, uh, Sniper is a 17 year old rookie, right? If he thinks it's bad getting a message from like an Immortals fan, like, you suck. But <laughs> wait until you've seen Vampetta's dick 7,000 times in one day. And then you're like, wait, Wait a minute, I didn't even play them today. That's going to be your life going forward. I mean, forward the other, the other I hope classic. A lot, I hope there's a lot of support staff and like mental health people on staff. We're going to need the, that, mate. It's going to break. The other, the other classic, of course, is if you're American, Brazil fans love to say, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Monty, you're going to think I'm man. trolling when I say this. They do this to me and Richard, who are from yeah. England, because they just hear us speaking. Their go-to insult is to mock 9-11 happening, bro. <laughs> yeah. And that's all the video games. So get ready for how wild the drama is going to be yeah. in this fucking thing. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be crazy. <laughs> I mean, and to be fair, every time I see it, I do never forget. I, 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 I do the single tear, never forget. Um, but um, 
Yeah, yeah, they, they. I mean, like, it's, it's always Van Peter's penis or nine eleven pictures. I can't tell you how many so times. Weird. Like, by what, the way, what, what level the of like, thing? what level of poor impulse control do you have that someone goes, yeah, well, your team isn't even that good in video games. Yeah, well, I've got that terrorist attack up all those people. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Well, the that's bad like zero thing is, sixty. What are you doing? My, my involvement with esports <laughs> and the Brazilian esports fan. There are two things that are burned into my brain. That horrible day on September eleventh, and Van Peter's fucking. <laughs> erect penis and they they're there there's an association i can't get rid of now maybe somebody you should know? just photoshop his penis as the twin towers oh. <laughs> listen is this the segment where we're allowed to make 9-11 jokes why is he even going for that i don't i'm, like, just, I, I'm just trying to uh, level up the the brazilian so it's you know, said, Twitter by game. the way like, can we Photoshop? I already got nervous immediately. Yeah, Monty, you got the, me trapped in a in an episode <laughs> where I don't know who is Abbott thinks. Thanks. Thanks. Well, <laughs> thank you guys. I really appreciate. Yeah, it's, it's, All right, it's, it's I'm fine. Done. But I'm but, done. but actually, definitely, uh, El Gapo, my memeologist from my community, get right on that right now. <laughs> I, I I unironically do want to see that. <laughs> Moving on. Um. So yes, uh, let's, uh, let's I, I think overall though, I, I do like the concept behind it. it. You just, I wish they had gone further with some of these ideas. By the I way, wish... I, I actually have a question for you, Monty, which is another one that's actually about how the League of Warriors received. Let's try doing the opposite thought experiment. Yep. How will actually South American people receive this league? Because Monty, that's not a minor issue. You're seeing, I want the viewership of CB Law, right? That's what you're seeing if you're LCS. You saw this. The second this was even hinted at being rumored at, they did all the shit that we despise about them in CS, where they just go, "Wait, you are not like us. You will never understand us. You are xenophobes, and we are the only ones who are going to... They're doing that already, bro. And if you don't know, by the way, even though obviously it's quite a while ago now. They never shut the fuck up in CS about that colonizer tip. Well, in this scenario, you have essentially colonized their fucking league. Like, <laughs> and it's pretty wild. Like, what you just oh, that's like true. at least you called it Southern Conference, I guess, but you have just rocked up and gone, right, 20 years to fit to work. I'll do I mean, to be, to be fair, they didn't, to be fair, they didn't want to. Um, that's true. So. You know. But I, that's the one thing I wonder about Monty is like I keep saying it's not it's not a joke. There are people who are going to boycott this league or from Brazil who were like, yeah, we could have just kept the LCS yeah. branding and called it the League of Legends Did... Colonizer series. What 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 was wrong with that? They should Did have called read... the top division desperate for viewership and the bottom division death to America. That should be the <laughs> obvious instead of North and South Conference. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good branding. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, uh, right. Anyway, you, I you feel so me. bad for Zavati. He thought he was coming off like a boring ass know, like, uh, format discussion. I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I usually watch the show, and usually, you know, it's like it's like there's some 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 ball, you know, some uh, some jokes, you know. And but this time, this time I was like in the middle of you three, and I'm like, oh, I'm not a viewer anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> so, no, I'm being implicated. You know, I'm being implicated. Yeah, yeah, like, you are implicated <laughs> for everything Corin says everywhere, all of it's the over, time guys. now. Yeah, it's so Jova for you. Um, um, no, but like, you're right, though. I mean, like, to, to, to the serious point, there are the, the, the sentiment coming out of the South American fan base, particularly among the Brazilian fans, is that, you know, fuck this league that, that like people haven't got over the the, the death of cb lol i can't remember i was trying to find it there i read an article uh that came out at the time after they announced the changes um and uh, it was really good and it made like a very compelling argument uh as to why so many people were were pissed off about it um is this it yeah this is it uh it, it was uh, it was on may, may esports and it was by, uh, let me get the writer's name so people can just go and read it. Is it Leon Butcher? Uh, if, if that name means any anything to anyone. Anyway, I read it and I was like, yeah, you know what? These fans are fucking pissed off and they kind of have a point, you know, because it wasn't their league that was failing, <laughs> right? Once again, this American, uh, you know, privilege that, they, that you have in esports uh had to play into and it, they essentially dismantled a successful operational league to just to insert elements of it into an unsuccessful league operationally speaking just to help americans make money 
So I can totally and I can totally fuck with that sentiment. For once, I'm 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 with the Brazil esports fans. I'll be posting. I'll post Van Peter's dick right there with you guys. I'm 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 there. I'm there with you. I stand I stand with Van Peter on this one. You know. Uh, that's that's true that they could have just kept the the um, two leagues right and make we had the battle of the atlantics or something and then we have the rivals with rivals or things something like this yep. between europe and na i think it wasn't really hard to make lcs stay lcs and make maybe like i would have understood the consolidation of lla and and cbl I, I think that's something that's way more reasonable uh on the to the eyes of the so southern american fans uh, here, yeah, it's just because well, if they keep that format, I think the the product LCS doesn't have enough teams to be relevant by itself. Sure, but I, I think another issue there is another layer to this that Riot has been pretty explicit about, which has been that they basically had too many franchise teams, right? And a big part of this is the what happened, guys, is that this past year has been the renegotiation of the team participation agreements, the, i.e. the franchise agreements, the legal documents that bound teams. So heading into next year, like this was the last year in which those applied from the original round of franchising. So this was their chance to change things. And Riot has said straight up, like John Needham has, has said, there are too many franchise teams. We are creating a new revenue distribution system, which is a globally based revenue pool. And there's just too many teams to reasonably split this up. So I do think, and, and that can be true. And it is very true that there were too many franchise teams. Like there are 17 in fucking China. There's 10 in Korea. There's 10 in North America. There's 10 in CBLOL. There's 10 in Europe, right? There's too many. And so they are cutting it down to a more reasonable place so there's, that it can be more too sustainable many if you want to run a singular circuit i mean it's a stupid that, circuit yes it was always yeah, stupid right that's that 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 again is the issue you if if you move but away they, from that my model, point is that they are trying to do things the reason why they are doing this is that they are tr they are changing the way revenue is distributed and according to their math they said we have too many teams to distribute it and now they have cut down not just to 12 between LCS and CB LOL, but actually 11 because 100 Thieves is out, right? Yeah. Um, well, I guess the LLA teams are in. So, but it, it's still, they, they basically cut out like six, seven teams out of that. Um, and so I think that was a big part of the reasoning behind it. And it wouldn't be surprising to me. Like, in fact, it would be shocking to me if they didn't have fewer teams in LPL in the future. It would be shocking if they didn't have fewer teams in LCK because LCK and LPL are suffering tremendously financially right now. Mm. Salary caps are going down in LPL. LCK, I know the, the many of the teams within the league are fucking angry at the way that things are going and the costs that are spiraling out of control in LCK, even with the soft cap coming into the league next year. And so when you look at this, it wouldn't be surprising if LPL went down to 10 teams and LCK went down to eight teams. Like, and also we don't need the bottom seven LPL and the bottom two LCK teams like that. Those are not competitive teams. Those are dog shit teams and they could go, go away tomorrow and nobody would care. Yeah. 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 I mean, you, it, it, it's a spot on assessment. Um, see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.